It's becoming painfully obvious to me that I'm old, and I'm fighting an entirely different battle than I fought when I was young. Approaches that worked back then just don't work now. If I want to make progress on difficult body weight skills, I'm going to have to do a better job of accommodating the age-related changes in my body. Welcome to Calisthenics Through the Ages. For anyone who's new, this is a channel about calisthenics, advanced body weight strength training, and health and fitness for older people. When I was in my 20s, I did an insane amount of physical activity. I was doing three hard gymnastics workouts per week, about three hours each. And I was going hard, but doing it badly. I had no real guidance. I just pounded away at whatever I was trying to learn. A lot of what I did was very hard on my body. I typically took many hard landings every workout. A lot of the injuries that I have now stem from overuse during that time period. And that's not all. I also commuted by bike, about 90 minutes a day, five days a week, every day that it didn't rain. And I basically rode as fast as I could ride all the time. I also did other things. For example, starting at age 27, while still doing all that other stuff, I got heavily involved in a certain skating activity at Venice Beach. I got so obsessed, I was spending about 20 hours a week on my skates. I practiced so hard that I developed numb spots in my toes that lasted for years after I stopped doing it. I still have a callus on my right big toe 20 years after I stopped skating hard. Now you can see how I got the way I am today. I never changed. I just got older and more beaten up. Anyway. I'm quite sure that if I tried to do all that stuff now, I would be dead within a week. Or, at least I'd be so injured and exhausted that I would wish I were dead. And even if you eliminated all the stuff that older people clearly can't handle, like repeated landings from 10 feet in the air, still, I don't think I could handle anywhere near that level of physical activity. So, why is that? What's the difference between my mid-50s body and my mid-20s body? It's nothing obvious. I'm not trying to brag, I know I'm not all that, but I don't have the usual middle age problems. I'm about as lean as I was back then, I'm quite a bit stronger, and I have 5 or 10 pounds more muscle on me now than I did back then. I also haven't lost a lot of endurance, or aerobic capacity. I have a couple of concrete measures of how I've performed at certain high intensity aerobic activities over a couple of decades. I've lost some, but as far as I can tell, my performance is still above 90% of what it was when I was young. So the thing that's changed is definitely not strength, and I really don't think it's my capacity to perform high-intensity work. It doesn't seem to be related to overall fitness, so what else could it be? Well, there's one obvious possibility. Maybe your muscles need longer to recover when you're older, independent of strength or fitness. There's a lot of good data on this, and my take on it is that slower muscle recovery is probably not the main culprit. There's no general consensus on this, and studies show mixed results. For example, this study from 2016 compared muscle protein synthesis between master's athletes and young athletes. The authors concluded that well-trained master's athletes showed lower muscle protein synthesis than young athletes did. But this study from 2017, which compared recovery response to resistance exercise between young and middle-aged people, found no difference in several measures of recovery. I'm not an expert, but I've read through many studies of this type. And although I do think there's evidence for slower muscle growth and recovery in older people, I don't think that it's a large effect, at least not up to my age group. I would guess that it's not a huge factor up to at least age 65. Of course, if you're already 55 and you decide you want to be a professional bodybuilder, you'll be at a disadvantage. But for most older athletes, your muscles ability to recover and grow are probably not going to be the main thing that holds you back. And that brings me to what probably is the deciding factor, and that is your joints, and specifically your tendons and ligaments. This is what I think is the really big issue, whether you're injured or not. First, a very quick primer on joints. The connective tissue in joints consists primarily of tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. Tendons are cable-like structures that connect muscle to bone. Ligaments are similar to tendons, but they connect bone to bone. Cartilage coats the surfaces of bones where they meet, and provide cushioning and lubrication. Osteoarthritis is joint pain which is caused by the degradation of cartilage. I'm not going to focus on that in this video. Not that it's not important, but I think that physical damage to the cartilage mostly occurs due to high impact activities. I have some arthritis in my hips, no doubt due to my obsession with jumping off of high places as a kid and doing lots of high dismounts in my 20s. I don't do things like that anymore and I don't discuss high impact activities in my videos. 
After all, this is a channel geared towards older people. I think that if you stay lean so that you're not too heavy and you avoid high impact activities, you probably don't have to worry too much about osteoarthritis. What I'm gonna talk about and what I think is the really big problem is tendons and ligaments. Obviously, they're a major point of weakness in the human body and they're a potential problem for everybody, but they're a much bigger problem for us older people. Unfortunately, there are a number of biological changes that happen to tendons as we age. One big one is that the vascular supply, the blood supply to the tendons, diminishes with age. This figure shows blood flow in the supraspinatus tendon after exercise in people in different age groups. As you can see, there was about a 50% drop in blood flow between young people and people over the age of 40. There also seems to be an increase in the levels of degradative enzymes in aging tendons. And if that's not bad enough, there are various changes in tendon cell biochemistry that lead to a worse healing response with age. And there are several other age-related changes to tendons and ligaments that either increase the chance of injury or decrease the effectiveness of healing. So if you're an older guy, say about mid-50s, and you're trying to learn, oh, let's say a plange, you're in for an uphill battle. And I think that the aging of your tendons and ligaments is the primary reason. And going back to my original question, why can't I do all the stuff I used to be able to do? Even if we eliminate the stuff that would quickly lead to injury, like dismounts from 10 feet in the air, I couldn't come close to the level of physical activity that I engaged in in my 20s. It simply takes far less activity to exhaust me than it used to. Here's my theory, and I admit this is just how I think it works. I'm not aware of any data to support this. I think that when you work out a lot or are just very active, even if you don't get overtly injured, your joints, mainly your tendons and ligaments, experience constant microtrauma, just like your muscles do. If you're young, probably your tendons can repair quickly enough that you bounce back quickly, but beyond a certain age, the repair process can't keep up. Even if you don't become injured, your joints remain a little bit compromised and you experience that as kind of a dull ache. I think that a lot of the exhaustion that you feel now that you didn't feel when you were young is this dull aching of your joints. And if it's subtle enough that you're not overtly aware that it is an ache in your joints, then you experience it as being very tired, especially if that dull ache is coming from many joints all over your body so it feels nonspecific or delocalized. I think that the feeling of exhaustion is your body's way of getting you to slow down before you do get injured. And I think it's a signal from your body that you need more downtime so it can try to recover. In other words, you're probably not actually as exhausted as you feel. You probably could keep going, but it's probably not a good idea. Why am I even talking about such a depressing topic? I'm sure you're like, okay, we get it. Your joints just get worse as you age. It's all downhill from here. Well, part of it is that I was genuinely curious about this. Why am I capable of far less activity than I used to be? And why do I get injured so much more easily? And I just wanted to explore the topic. But there's a bigger reason why this stuff is on my mind. You see, I am in my mid fifties. I am trying to learn a plange and I have managed to injure myself. I hurt my right shoulder back in February doing intense plange training. I limped along for months. I stopped doing all straight arm movements and continued doing everything else at a lower level of intensity. The pain initially got better, but then leveled off and hasn't really changed a whole lot for a long time. I finally went to the doctor a couple weeks ago and I'm scheduled to see an orthopedic surgeon in about a week. Not that I think I'll need surgery, I just want an accurate diagnosis. I'm pretty sure that the problem is in my rotator cuff, probably the supraspinatus tendon, but I'll know for sure soon. So that's what got me thinking about this stuff. I've been trying to figure out how to progress on my strength goals without constantly injuring myself. The path to progress seems to get narrower as you age. It gets harder and harder to train enough to make progress without training too much and getting injured. But I remain confident that there is a path forward for me and for you. Upcoming videos will focus on practical solutions to these problems and I'm finding a path forward. And I'll close with this. Although aging sucks and it comes with unavoidable biological changes, if you're working out or doing any kind of physical training, you should have no doubt that you're doing the right thing. There's tons of evidence that exercising, especially resistance training, reverses or slows down most of these effects of aging that I've talked about. And when you're training hard, it's like you're on the front lines in the battle against aging. 
So you may feel the effects of aging more than sedentary people do, but in fact, you're actually slowing down the aging process. And even if you have some pain, in the long run, things will be better for you. You'll live longer, healthier, and happier. Thanks for watching. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or ideas about any of this. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more content like this. Good luck with your training, and I'll see you in the next video.